Hello, this is Shan Chandrasekhar welcoming you to another delightful special on our program. Hello, this is Shan Chandrasekhar welcoming you to a delightful part of our programming. We are delighted to present an outstanding individuals as part of the Achiever series here. Uh, it's none other than Ms. Diane Del Rosario, who is the Public Affairs Officer of the United States Consul General's Office here in Toronto. Diane, what a pleasure to see you. It's a pleasure to see you as well. Thank you for having me on your program, Shan. Diane, you know, tell us about your particular role. So as the Public Affairs Officer at the U.S. Consulate uh, here in Toronto, uh, my job is to help promote U.S. and Canada relations uh, through exchanges, education, uh, and actually with, with uh, media such as uh, ATN. So very pleased to be able to do that. Uh, it's really just about strengthening our bilateral relationship with everyday uh, Canadians. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned about media and journalism. Mm -hmm. You have a degree in journalism, actually. Uh, yeah. You have more than one degree. So tell <laughs> us about your academic career first to start with. Sure. So um, from an early age, I became very interested in uh, studying media. I originally wanted to become a foreign correspondent. So I began training for that. I uh, went to Boston University, where I got a degree in uh, actually French language and literature as well as um, broadcast journalism. Uh, during that time, I worked for a number of local television stations. Do parents supervise what their children watch on TV? We decided to find out by conducting a survey of elementary and high school students. About 43% of the high school students said that they weren't allowed to watch shows like Married with Children and MTV when they were younger. First graders told us they can't watch programs which contain sex, cursing, or violence. Although they have TV restrictions, 57% of the fifth graders reported that they usually watch TV by themselves. In the end, um, when I graduated, I had a, a great offer from a television company, uh, but um, I decided to do something a little bit different and uh, teach English uh, in Japan, actually. So wow. I wanted to have an international career, and I thought to myself, well, those opportunities will come in the future. And I didn't really expect that I would become a diplomat. It's a long story <laughs> to get there. But uh, uh, I ended up going to school uh, to study to be a journalist. And now I do do a little bit of work in that uh, area, working uh, with journalists uh, in every single post uh, that I go to and um, looking forward here in Canada. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you have a tremendous role that you have played in the field of migration mm -hmm. and uh, dealing with refugees yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this experience. So uh, during one of my assignments uh, in Washington, D.C., I was the head of an office uh, that deals with uh, migration policy and multilateral engagement. We also support governments uh, overseas who are looking to um, assist migrants yeah. uh, and working with migrants. So um, as you can imagine, migration uh, is something that affects so many countries, um, whether it's brought on you know, by uh, natural or uh, man-made causes. Um, but in many cases, you know, people uh, sometimes find themselves in situations where they need to leave their countries and how can they get the support when they do that. So uh, my, my office uh, at the time um, works on these kind of issues. So. Tell us about your particular role now. Sure. So uh, by trade, I am uh, a, someone who specializes in uh, media and cultural relations. And so uh, we are looking to support uh, Canadians here uh, in Toronto uh, with their uh, education goals, uh, as well as um, those who want to uh, study abroad or, or participate in an exchange program, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, engaging uh, media organizations to talk about uh, our relations as well as our cultural relations. So that's mostly what I, I do with the consulate. You speak Russian, French, <laughs> Spanish, Tagalog, that's my right. God, uh, English of course, and you yes. know several languages. Yes. So tell me about this linguistic skill. Well, um, growing up in a Filipino American household, my parents spoke Tagalog to me, uh, and so I learned that growing up. And uh, when I was in school, uh, they taught French, and so I started from a very young age, about six, seven years old. And by the time I got through college, I just I just kept going with it. I, I kind of liked it, and um, I really enjoyed you know traveling, meeting other people, uh, learning about other cultures, and so 
Um, as I progressed in my career, I, I went to Japan, and I, as I was teaching English there, I was also learning Japanese uh, on the side, and it, it, in a way, helped me to connect with my students who were learning English because they were struggling with language. And I said, hey, look, I'm your teacher, and I'm learning your language too. We're learning together. Um, I find that sometimes, uh, you know, students, people who, uh, who are studying languages, they're very nervous or they don't want to make a mistake. And uh, it's important to just keep trying um, because eventually fluency, you become fluent. Uh, <laughs> you don't start off fluent right away. It, it seems very easy to say, well, you speak a lot of languages, but it, it's a process. And so along the way, uh, after I joined the State Department, I learned a few more languages, including um, Indonesian and, and Russian. Not all of them were easy, <laughs> definitely, but um, I, I view them each as different challenges. You were the cultural affairs officer in mm -hmm. Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. representing the United States government. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that experience. Oh, that was a really great assignment, a very unexpected one because I um, arrived in Tashkent and I did not have a huge background um, in the country. They give, of course, you know, teach us language and, and culture beforehand, but um, it's a, it was a fascinating place because I, there's not many um, folks mm -hmm. uh, who go there from the West or from the United States. Um, and so it was really an opportunity to represent my country and to show uh, right, everyday Uzbeks uh, about our culture and to talk to them uh, in English because that's a, a, you know, maybe a third or fourth language for some people there. Um, and just to show them you know, what America was all about um, through our exchanges again or um, through some of the programs that we had hosted over the, uh, at the embassy, including for journalists actually. So um, it was really a, a wonderful experience and I had the opportunity to travel to many parts. So Great. Well, the fact that you had the opportunity to travel to many parts of the world, you were also the commercial officer representing the United States government in Bahrain. That's right. Tell us about it. So Bahrain um, is a country where the United States uh, and the Kingdom of Bahrain, they have a free trade agreement. So, of course, it makes it a lot easier uh, in terms of uh, trade relations when you have an agree such an agreement. But uh, during that time, um, I was there to help promote U.S. businesses uh, who are looking to uh, expand uh, to other markets as well as to promote United States uh, businesses uh, to Bahrainis who wanted to invest. So I had the opportunity to work with a lot of companies um, to showcase American technology and innovation um, and, and to introduce them to uh, a different part of the world where they were looking. So sometimes they need, um, you know, uh, a friendly person to show them uh, how the market works. Um, how uh, uh, businesses um, can grow and prosper in different countries. And so um, that's some of the uh, services uh, that our commercial colleagues and at the time myself um, are able to uh, provide to American business as well as Bahrainis. You took a delegation on tour there, actually. I remember showing them more than just a piece of paper. You took yes. them on an aircraft carrier. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we Tell did. us about that experience. So uh, in Bahrain, it is the home of uh, our Navy's Fifth Fleet. And so we work often with the military or military colleagues mm -hmm. whenever we have civilian or, or senior level visits. And so um, one of the great experiences I had there was to bring a group of um, Bahraini entrepreneurs to a uh, U.S. naval uh, aircraft carrier mm -hmm. um, to see what uh, our military does. Mm -hmm. I happen to be from a, uh, I'm from a proud military family, mm -hmm. um, and so service runs deep uh, <laughs> in my in my family. And so it was just a really great opportunity to show uh, civilians um, the work uh, of our military, and it was just a very unique experience for them. We're doing a television special with. Miss Diane Del Rosario. There is more to come on the program. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're a consular officer in Jakarta. Yes. Uh, so that was uh, one of my first tours in the department. And so uh, through that, I was able to, uh, of course, help U.S. citizens mm -hmm. as well as uh, adjudicate visas um, for uh, visitors to the United States. Uh, one of the great things about being a consular officer is you get to the opportunity to meet all kinds of people from society, just as in my uh, current um, field today um, in, in public diplomacy. Um, and so you really get to learn a lot about the country mm -hmm. through the people that you meet. Even though it might be through a glass window, um, you get to hear a lot about 
their stories and their lives. And so it was very informative for me um, hearing uh, from, from the people of Indonesia as well as U.S. citizens. And you were part of a delegation to Geneva, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. What exactly was it about? So uh, during that time, I um, was part of a delegation that was there to uh, discuss multilateral issues uh -huh. uh, with regards to migration. And mm -hmm. so oftentimes as diplomats, we um, uh, are you know, representing our countries in different forum uh, to uh, talk about some of the issues that are uh, of concern to not just to the United States, but to other countries. Uh, and so in that particular instance, we were talking about current migration issues and how to help, you know, um, resolve some uh, collective challenges that we're all experiencing with regards to migration and refugees and crisis and how to help, help people. Are there any United Nations resolution that's going to help streamline migration? Uh, the United States, you know, values the contributions that uh, migrants bring to yeah. our country and so it's very important to be able to support people who uh, are coming uh, to our country as and I know that um, migrants and, and refugees add a lot of diversity to our to our country so uh, as a policy I'm not sure if there's any specific uh, um, resolutions uh, that will be coming uh, to the forefront uh, at the United Nations uh, but in general um, the United States welcomes uh, immigrants from all over, as does Canada. And so um, in that vein, uh, we look forward to supporting um, the integration of, of people, of newcomers to our country. You spent time in Morocco mm -hmm. as a student. Yes. What was it like? It was really fascinating as well. Uh, I had the opportunity to work at our embassy there um, in the political section. And during that time, I got to work with a lot of uh, universities uh, and students. Um, I had a wide portfolio supporting uh, the embassy, and so it was really great training for me um, as I uh, started my career uh, in the Foreign Service. So um, I was able to benefit from a lot of mentoring from diplomats, and it just really strengthened my resolve to become a, a diplomat. Um, so You have two bachelor's degrees, and you have a master's degree, if I'm right? Correct. This is a fascinating academic background that you have. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your family roots because you've got tremendous connection in Canada, yes. especially in Toronto, mm -hmm. with, with extended family that you have. Please describe your family roots here. Sure. So my, my mother actually uh, immigrated to Toronto in the late 60s from the Philippines um, and uh, sponsored many of her uh, family members. Uh, to this day, uh, I have uh, quite a few, a <laughs> couple of hundred, I think, relatives here in the Toronto area. At some point um, in the early 70s, uh, my mother uh, ended up immigrating to the United States where uh, my brother and I were born. Uh, and so very grateful <laughs> to be born uh, in the United States, but also grateful to have the opportunity to be here in Canada. Um, it's uh, been a very interesting uh, path to come here. Our assignments, you know, um, shift and change very frequently. And so um, it's been uh, great to, to be here and to be able to work professionally. Um, here, but also to be able to connect with them um, here uh, in Toronto. So I'm looking forward to uh, spending the next three years here to strengthen our relationships, but also to connect with family. What was your ambition when you were in first year university? Did you ever think that you're going to pursue a diplomatic career? Um, I did not. I really wanted to become a, a broadcast journalist. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Christiana Manpour, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was about the time uh, yeah. when that was happening, and um, I uh, ended up going to Japan um, to teach English, and then eventually, um, as I came back, I worked in the private sector for a little bit. Um, and then I ended up working at the United Nations where I worked with a lot of diplomats and I thought to myself, well, I think I'd like to try my hand at this. And so I applied for graduate school and, and I took the exam. Um, the State Department has uh, five career tracks and so I chose the one that I felt suited me uh, the most given my, my background in uh, uh, culture, education, as well as uh, media training and so I, I chose public diplomacy. How do you think your journalism background and uh, media experience, how do you think it helped you in terms of your current role in the diplomatic corps? Well, I think all of the, uh, the, the positions I've taken during my career have helped me uh, in some way. Um, 
uh, with journalism, uh, it's helped me as I've worked with the press uh, in different countries and in different uh, positions. Even prior to the Foreign Service, I was doing public relations and working with the press. Um, it's helped me to understand the perspective of uh, journalists and uh, their work mm -hmm. um, in, you know, uh, trying to help educate and inform the public. And so I try to be as helpful as I can uh, in providing information to journalists. Um, I also think that the, the role of journalism uh, and journalists is very important in society. Um, they're the voice of the people. Um, they help uh, to explain um, and ask questions on behalf of the public mm -hmm. um, of their leaders mm -hmm. uh, and to hold them accountable. So mm -hmm. uh, I have a deep respect <laughs> for, for the media um, and, and stations uh, such as uh, ATN. The U.S. Senator and a major militia group are urging outsiders to stay away from a ranch in Jordan, Montana. And a Superior Court judge has handed the first man convicted of violating Maine's ban against assisted suicide a suspended sentence. 52-year-old Robert Desjardins faces a year of probation, 300 hours of community service, and a $2,000 fine. What are your future plans? Where would you like to go from here? Oh, this is a very difficult question because <laughs> there's so many places around the world. But um, I hope to continue on in my career after this, um, either doing more public diplomacy work or potentially um, applying for positions such as a consul general or uh, a deputy chief of mission uh, at our embassies. That's wonderful. Shan will join us after this break. Do stay with us. You've now been with the American Diplomatic Corps for how many years approximately? About 14 years now. About 14. You look mm -hmm. awfully young. Oh, you thank know? you. That's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. So when there is a change in government, mm -hmm. does it put any undue pressure on any of the consular functions or your role for that matter? Well, it does. Um, when administrations change um, for... Uh, uh, embassies and consulates around the world. We do have to get ready to prepare for mm -hmm. new leadership to come in, as well as to um, listen and be able to explain new policies yeah. um, that come from time to time. And so um, we also need to be able to work with governments where we're based and the countries that we're based um, on how uh, we uh, plan on uh, promoting those policies um, worldwide. So it, it happens and it's just change is really a part of our lives, of our careers. Even as diplomats, we move every two to three years. Mm -hmm. um, we move with our families even. Yeah. And so um, it's uh, getting used to change over and over and over again. So it's, it's something yeah. we get used to. Mm -hmm. And it actually helps us be more resilient um, in our careers because it's not easy when you know, you're going from one kind of situation or country to another and um, you don't know what to expect, but it, you know, we, we get used to it. That's fascinating. Uh, I've had the honor and the pleasure of interviewing several ambassadors, consul generals mm -hmm. from different parts of the world, mm -hmm. and some you know, senior members from the diplomatic corps as well. Mm -hmm. Usually they all have a change once in four years, five years, three years, depending upon the nature mm -hmm. of the placement mm -hmm. of the country. Uh, when you have children, does it have an impact on the family life of the kids and their education? It does. Um, so in my instance, I bring my family with me uh, uh -huh. wherever I go. Uh -huh. uh, my children have <laughs> been to many countries. Uh, I think for some of them, by the time they were a year old, they've been to six, seven, eight countries. Wow. Most people don't go to that uh, amount of countries, maybe in their lifetime, perhaps. Absolutely, yes. But one of the great things about um, this career is that your families get to be a part of that, not in every country, of course, but um, they get to learn, and as children, they get to grow and see how different parts of the world live um, in all you know, aspects of that. Um, they get to learn uh, new languages, and I think it makes them, later on in life, uh, very resilient people, very um, open to new ideas and easily adaptable. Every time you travel to another country and get exposure to another culture, mm -hmm. it's almost like getting another degree. <laughs> so, yes. you know, in one way, maybe it's an asset to children to experience that mm -hmm. at a very young age through you, for that matter. What would you advise others who are immigrants, you know, or people of um, you know, visible minorities in this country who mm -hmm. are aspiring uh, to join different diplomatic corps, not only United States, I'm talking about other countries as well. What would you advise them? 
Well, I definitely would advise them to go for it. <laughs> you never know uh, uh, unless you try. Um, no matter how daunting it may seem, um, the first step is to take that first step. And so um, it doesn't really matter where you come from, but uh, all countries can benefit um, from public service of all aspects of their society. And so um, I would advise people to, to, to try to, uh, to enter their uh, diplomatic services. If you just graduated last year mm -hmm. in journalism, mm -hmm. would you do exactly what you did in your career? Uh, looking forward at the time, I didn't see the connection, but looking backward now, it absolutely made sense. Um, when I was a student, I loved history, I loved uh, languages, um, and so that later translated um, into looking at an international career. Um, not everybody has the opportunity to travel, but you can certainly meet with um, other groups in your community to learn about their cultures and just take that first step from there. So. Well, since you're very fluent in more than one language, <laughs> I'm going to request, you know, okay. you just mentioned about languages. Yep. Can you say just a few words of greetings in French to our audience across oh, the country? Of just course, a few words. Sure. Well, bonjour à tout le monde. Je suis très heureux uh, 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 d'être ici au Canada et j'espère que uh, je peux uh, travailler avec tous les, tous les Canadiens ici um, pour uh, 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 approfondir nos relations uh, bilaterales. Merci beaucoup. It's wonderful to mm -hmm. have you here. What do you think of the kind of work that we are doing in this part of the world? I think it's fantastic. I think it's very important work to be able to um, showcase uh, the great richness and wealth of uh, South Asian culture um, and uh, to be able to provide all these kinds of programming uh, for the communities here in Toronto and, and in Canada. Do you think that a caliber of what we are doing here, if we bring this now, a similar setup, and do a major investment in the United States, uh, do you think that would be good for the a community? Absolutely. Well, we might do that soon. Great, we welcome, <laughs> we welcome it. Thank you. Uh, Diane, it's such a pleasure having you in the program with us. Again, we want to wish you all the best. May you go from success to success. I, before I close, I wanted to just ask you, can you remember in a, in a very pleasant moment in your career? Very pleasant moment. Well, there were many pleasant moments, um, but my favorite moments were speaking to young people uh -huh. and telling them about the United States. And for those who uh, we were able to get onto our exchange programs, being able for them to see, see and experience the United States for themselves and to bring those stories back to their friends and their, their communities and their families. Um, for me, that was the rem most rewarding to, to work with young people. It's wonderful. Again, God bless you and Thank your you. family. All the best. Thank you. Keep up the great work you're doing. <laughs> Will do. Thank you. Good.